What's up everyone? This is Nathan Manuel, aka Jimmy's Boss, for week two of the Vlogger in Paradise. Clearly this is not paradise, this is home and nerd library. And this week we're going to talk about some poker. We're going to be talking about a few hands from Stone's Gambling Hall in Sacramento, California, where I played in a star-studded table with Daniel Nagano, uh, Johnny Vibes, Chris Moneymaker, and a bunch of other people. It's going to be a lot of fun, uh, really interesting hands, but all of which in which I fold. I know that folding isn't very sexy because clearly you're not winning if you're folding, uh, but I think it's important to talk about folds, big folds when uh, you're right, big folds when you're wrong, and then just casual folds that you're making throughout the game that create certain dynamics and establish uh, you know, what type of play you're going to be. So we're going to kick off this first hand with a hand in which uh, I get cold 4-bet, and I think it's a really interesting hand. We're going to cut to that now, and let's go through that. All right, so here's the game that we were talking about. It's the 5-5-10 game. The dynamics have been really interesting. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of uh, interest in playing with Daniel, and uh, it creates, and, and with Chris Moneymaker, and it creates some interesting um, responses from these amateur players who are there having an opportunity to play with them. And, um, you know, Harlan here is opening up with the 7-6 suited. He's a little bit of a, a well-known local player. Uh, interestingly, the Wolf is calling behind at the 8-4. You know, I, I decide to make a relatively large 3-bet here. I think I'm getting a lot of calls from a wide variety of hands, uh, but I don't want to go up against two, three, or four players, so I'm trying to size it in such a way that I'm going to get one caller maybe. Uh, I'm in position as well. Um, you know, I think it's surprising when he starts to tank here. I, I'm not sure about, you know, everybody's perspective on Roland, but I'm, I'm looking at him and thinking... This guy's not going to go too crazy too often. And so when he makes this cold 4-bet uh, to, I believe, 400, I don't think he's messing around. And so, you know, I start to limit his range quite a lot and what I think he would actually do this with. Um, and so it folds back around to Harlan, and Harlan makes the decision to call here, even though I think he only has about 2,000 behind. He's going to call for 400 with the 7-6 suited. And I have to say, you know, I think that once he makes this call, I feel like I actually make a mistake in that the, with the dead money, I should be just jamming pre-flop. Um, and as you're about to see, I'm going to just call. I have about 2,500 behind. Um, but with the dead money of the 400 in there, I, th I think I should be jamming pre and just uh, l letting it all run out. All right, so here we are with the call, and we get the Jack King 4 rainbow board. Uh, you know, this is pretty much the dream board, and as you can see, I have 79% equity in the hand um, and have both of these guys crushed. It's interesting to me that the 7-6 of diamonds actually has um, more equity in the hand than the king-queen. All right, so we see Roland continuation bet here for 500, and Harlan quickly folds. So I'm now in a position where I have to make a decision about if I'm going to call or if I'm going to just raise and get it all in. You know, I, I can't make a, I can't find a lot of reasons to just jam here. I feel like I'm only gonna get called by better hands, whereas if I just call, I can continue to just kind of slow play the strength of my hand and let him to can continue to bet into me in situations where, you know, there aren't many cards that I'm worried about on the turn. So I just make the call, and then we get the queen of hearts on the turn. And, you know, Roland looks at, looks at my stack there, and pretty quickly he just goes all in. So, you know, this is a really unfortunate card for me. It's probably one of the only cards in the deck that I'm worried about. Um, and so when he has the cold 4-bed in here, you're going to see that I tank for a minute. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself right now, are there any hands that I beat that he cold 4-bets with on this particular board? So if he has aces, I'm losing. If he has kings, I'm losing. If he has jacks, I'm losing. If he has queens, I'm losing. Um, of course, I block kings and I block aces a little bit, but the reality is is that I still can't think of any particular hands that I'm beating. So you're going to see that I sit here and tank for a little bit, but the whole time I'm watching this and look, look, Roland is getting more and more comfortable as the hand goes along. And so, you know, now that I've not snap called, He's actually sitting there and he's ruffling his chips and he's not kind of interacting with me or making any facial gestures towards me. And I see that he's just kind of like there and comfortable. And, you know, once I look at my hand here, I actually realize this is a tell of my hand. Once I look at my hand there, I'm probably folding the vast majority of the time. But in the end, 
I just can't think of any hands that he's cold four betting into three people that he is going to both continuation bet and then jam this queen turn. Um, so, you know, I do think here, and I'm talking to him, thinking about all the different hands he can possibly have. And then, you know, I find the lay down here. I, I show the king here, and I actually show the king hoping that he'll, he'll show me a little something. And I have to tell you that when he shows me the king, I, I still feel rather confident about my fold in that I don't think the, there are many hands that I'm beating. And I guess the only hand he can possibly have there where, um, you know, I'm, I'm not actually winning, but we're just chopping it up is that he also has ace king. So always a possibility, but I feel like a pretty good fold. I think in the moment I thought he had kings uh, just because I couldn't think of any other hands he was cold four bidding with. So that's that hand, and let's move on to the other one. The second hand is the hand in which Johnny Vibes reviewed on his vlog. I think it's a really interesting hand because Johnny three bets Pearl Jammer from an early position, and it really creates an interesting dynamic, and it creates a situation where I feel a lot of pressure to fold on a turn that isn't that scary. So let's check out that hand now. Okay, so here we go, and we're going to watch Moneymaker look at the ace three off here under the gun and just find the fold. But then immediately under the gun plus one, Pearl Jammer is going to find the open to 40 with the ace jack of diamonds. You know, I think this is a really reasonable open. Everybody's relatively deep. Uh, and I think interestingly here, Johnny Vibes decides to three bet a very good player with ace nine suited. But, you know, as he explained in his video, he's, he's going to get three bet here a lot because he knows that Daniel's to his direct left. He doesn't want Daniel calling. He doesn't want to just call and let Daniel three bet him and then knock him off his hand. So he decides to three bet here. And then interestingly, the wolf, who's been playing a pretty wide range of hands, uh, just flats with the ace queen suited. And then I look down in the big blind to the pocket nines and just decided to call. You know, interestingly, in hindsight, this might be a spot where I can actually find a fold. A very good player is opening up under the gun plus one. A very good player is three betting that player under the gun plus two. And I'm not closing the action. So it's going to go back to Pearl Jammer here. And he's going to have the capacity as the original raiser to raise it up over the top of all of us. And then I would have had to find a fold anyways. So uh, a spot that I could have considered folding, I actually didn't think about that in the moment, but in hindsight, I'm looking at the hand and thinking, maybe I just fold pre. Um, then we go ahead and see this flop. It's the deuce, eight, five, rainbow flop. And, you know, it full, or checks through to Johnny Vibes. Johnny Vibes finds the continuation bet for 230. You know, as he said, this is a pretty good flop for him, the continuation bet, considering it doesn't hit anybody else's range very hardly. Um, you know, and my hand is looking a little more face up when I make the call here. You know, with the eight on the turn, I would suggest I have all the eights in my range and he has no eights in his range. Um, something to consider, but you know, I think that once he decides to make this relatively large size bet, so there's 1.1K in the pot and he makes it 700 um, and right, you know, I'm either going to have to go with this hand so I can either jam here and probably would have just got the snap fold um, would have would have gotten the snap fold, uh, or I have to call, which is a little bit of a unnecessary jam, I believe, and then see a river card that is you know any number of cards in the deck that would be extremely dangerous for me. I think that in a vacuum, I can just fold here pretty often, uh, and it's a relatively easy fold. I think that again in this exact circumstance, when Johnny Vibes is three betting an early position opener. I don't really beat a whole lot of his range at this point. And when he continues to bet here, I assume that he has a two pair that's better than mine. And I just find the fold and go back to eating my steak. All right. Well, we folded the best hand. That's not very sexy. It's not very sexy to fold. It's surely not very sexy to fold the best hand. However, in this specific situation, I think that we're making the right fold, especially when he's three betting such a great player from early position. With that said, Let's get on to what's coming up this week, in which I'll be playing in the Foxwood version of the Chris Moneymaker Platinum Pass event. Really looking forward to that, and I'm excited to bring you some content from that event uh, in the coming week. So, thank you for your time. Uh, please follow me on Twitter, at Nathan Manuel. I appreciate everybody's uh, feedback so far. Let me know what you think about these folds, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.